Ain't no more use for that thing, Zach. Why do you keep cleaning it all the time? Habit, I guess. You always were a great one for spit and polish. You even had the shiniest pants in the regiment. All part of soldiering, Corporal. I know. But what's the point of keeping up with it all here in this place, Zach? Sergeant Pike. Corporal. The name is Sergeant Pike. Sure, Sergeant. Anything you say. And button up that tunic. Jim, we're in the army. Remember? I'm not likely to forget. Say, that was one whale of a battle, wasn't it? They were at us like flies on honey. I guess we never should have rode out of still. If that old 12-pounder had held out a little longer, we'd have blasted the whole caboodle of them right out of Oklahoma. <laughs> I can still see you ramming the powder down old Bessie so fast it looked like you had a dozen arms. Speaking of still, I wonder what it's like back at the old fort now. Hope they have some bigger cannon than we had. Now that's something we'll never know. Perhaps you will, troopers. Who are you? An old friend. You from the 4th Cavalry? I've served with many regiments. Hey, you didn't happen to be at Little Bighorn. Yes, I was there. Hey, Zach, you was at the Horn. What was it like? I've heard that... How come we haven't run into you around here before? Well, I've got a lot of chores to take care of. But I've been watching you two for a long time. Would you really like to see what's happened at Fort Sill since you left the place? We sure would. All right, then. This way, please. begin our Fort Sill visit here, troopers. Recognize this place? Sure do. Look over there, Zach. It's Signal Mountain. Well, I'll be. We are back at Sill. Any the time I stood watch there, you could see the whole country for miles around. Sure could. Good afternoon, gentlemen. The mission of the field artillery is to use its firepower in support of the ground-gaining arm. This requires complete coordination of the full artillery team. What the thunderation was that? Who's that talking? If you look that way, these are students of the U.S. Army Field Artillery School. This is their first introduction to their functions as artillerymen and to the weapons they will operate as part of the field artillery team. The full artillery team consists of four main elements which work together to accomplish the artillery mission. Let's look briefly at what each one does. The artillery survey locates gun positions and targets. The forward observer adjusts fires on targets of opportunity, advises the commander on how to make efficient use of field artillery, plans artillery fires to support the operations of supported units, and reports all activity within his zone of observation. The Fire Direction Center evaluates information received from the forward observer, determines firing data, and furnishes this data in the form of fire command to the firing battery. The firing battery applies firing data to the weapon and fires it. All these elements must coordinate their actions for a successful mission. beat anything you ever seen? I'm thinking what we could have done if we had a bunch of cannon like that. 
What's happening at Fort Sill today began a long time ago, in the days when you two rode the planes. This was the country you remember, a vast, untamed frontier under which a great nation was to move in a mighty surge of growth. Your first assignment as troopers here was to pacify the warring Indian tribes. The old post guardhouse where many chiefs were detained is now part of the Fort Sill Museum. But your mission was one of protection, too. Protection for the tribes who made peace. Men from the Fort Sill garrison kept watch over the Indian settlements near the fort and saw that the Indian agencies operated without interference. Comanche, Kiowa, Cheyenne, Apache. These were familiar names to you and the troopers of the fort. From this post, you went out to patrol the great trails leading out of Texas. You watched the steady procession of settlers moving hopefully across the land. You were field artillerymen as well as troopers, and you carried your powder and shot and caissons like this one. You'll see a lot of familiar sights on the Forest Hill Museum buildings. You probably took a field piece just like this one into battle. Many of these weapons will look strange to you. They weren't developed until long after your time. In Fort Sill's Hall of Flags, glowing chapters in America's military history are kept alive. As the years passed, Fort Sill met the military challenges of a growing nation. It became a center for field artillery and the training of horse-drawn artillery units. The United States Army Field Artillery School, known as the School of Fire, was established at Fort Sill in 1911. From here on, warfare was to become a lot more complicated than the kind you knew, and field artillery techniques changed along with the times. Fort Sill became the first training center for U.S. Army infantry and aviation, and home of the first air unit in U.S. military service. Air operations were to become an important part of the artillery mission. For some years, observation balloons were used in artillery operations to spot targets. Today, observation planes give the artillerymen eyes in the sky. These men in the Artillery Aviation Training Course are learning how to rig a field artillery piece for airlift. U.S. Marines receive their artillery training at Fort Sill, and the number of Marines are on the faculty at the school. And form a choker hitch, merely by passing one end of that sling through its other loop end, and we have the slip knot or choker hitch now that will be placed around the tube and recuperator over that padded surface. The next step in rigging this house is to take two 11-foot air delivery slings 
place them around the trails over these heavily padded areas here and here by means of choker hitches. And today, thanks to the development of fast, heavy-lift Army aircraft, artillery can be carried to position and ready for combat in a very short time. Your beats pulling them with horses, doesn't it, Jim? Buying guns. Say, you ain't putting this on, are you? That was a real field piece, wasn't it? Real as that building behind you. What does that be? We call it Snow Hall, and it's the headquarters of Fort Sills U.S. Army Field Artillery School. Can we, uh, can we go in? Sure can. I thought you said this was a school. Yeah. Where is everybody? Learning, gentlemen. Learning like this. We have already discussed the first two elements of the gunnery team. That of the forward observer and the fire direction center. We're now going to discuss the third element, the firing battery. This is where the guns are located. But before we can ever... This is just one of many classrooms at Snow Hall where students learn the principles of gunnery. Computing firing ranges for modern field artillery requires knowledge of the most complex gunnery mathematics. In order for the executive officer to lay these guns, he will, using an aiming circle, and in conjunction with the gunner, using the panoramic telescope of the weapon, actually lay each gun by giving each other the instrument reading, thereby forcing the interior angle to read the same. The executive officer, together with the gunner, can determine a direction, a common direction, for all six weapons in the firing battery. Gentlemen, we have already discussed the two basic classifications of field artillery ammunition which we have in use today. The semi At Knox Hall, field artillery students get acquainted with the components of field artillery. We have some semi-fixed ammunition, which is characteristic of the 105 millimeter howitzer. On the left, we have the high explosive round, which utilizes a pillar of composition B. To the right of that, we have two smoke rounds. The first, the base ejection type. The second is a burster type, which has a filler of white phosphorus and a center core of a high explosive material. Next to this, we have a high explosive anti-tank round. Let's see how the three basic characteristics of field artillery weapons applies to the M102, 105 millimeter howitzer. The first of these is mobility. The weapon itself is mounted on a towed carriage is pulled by a prime mover, either a truck or a tractor. The weapon is also transportable by air. Today, U.S. Army field artillerymen are trained by highly skilled instructors, many of them combat veterans. This is achieved by raising the wheels on the weapon until it is resting on the ground on the octagonal firing platform. A crank handle is attached to the actuator assembly on the front of the weapon. By rotating this, this crank, the wheels are raised and the weapon is lowered. Classroom instruction provides each man with a working knowledge of the weapons he will use in the field. The weapon can now be rotated to any direction simply by one man picking up on the rear of the box trail and swinging them to the desired direction. I've entered into the computer three of these requirements. Accurate battery location, meteorological data, and weapons and ammunition information. Special classes in fire direction control use actual field equipment to train students. This portable fire direction center is called FADAC, one of many devices used in computing ranges for modern artillery weapons. 44210. 44210. Four, Enter it. Alpha 3, target northing, northing 50510. Five zero five one one. Correction. To clear this. You press the clear key on the keyboard. This data will be erased. The new northern can be typed in. Five zero five one zero. Five zero five one zero. Check. Enter it. Target altitude. Alpha four.
Classes are held in many subjects related to field artillery operations. This group of soldiers is learning how to perform automotive maintenance on a self-propelled 155 millimeter howitzer. Equipment which is going to actually put the uh, force behind the track itself in order to move our vehicle. What I've been trying to tell you, Zach, is that things have changed a lot since you and Jim first came out to Fort Sill. For instance, modern combat is likely to be fought over much greater distances than in your day. That means getting artillery information quickly and accurately to gun batteries spread out over a wide area. Gentlemen, this radio is issued to the Ford Observer. It's called a VRC-46. You have a range of 1.5 to 2 zero miles. Your frequency coverage on it is 30.00 to 75.95. Built into the set, we have the old on, the old off, you own and you off squelch. The reason this was built into the set is it has to work with the old series. As you know, to do his job effectively, today's field artillery student learns communications electronics, which is a fancy name for the way modern army elements keep in touch with one another during battle. Today's field artillery man has many different ways of getting his target intelligence. He is able to use a variety of complex electronic equipment to gather the information he needs in order to fire his weapons accurately. I know what you're thinking, Zack. The old signal flags seemed a lot easier way to spread the word. But we had to move along. In our time, military communications must be able to reach army units not only in one widespread combat area, but around the world if necessary. Maybe you and Jim used to dream about ammunition so big, it'd be more powerful than hundreds of thousands of rounds of your ammunition. Well, this ought to fill the bill. It's called the Pershing-1 missile system, 34 feet long, and can unleash nuclear blasts out to a 400-mile range. A new Pershing-1A system was introduced in 1970. The 1A system will provide improved mobility by conversion to wheeled vehicles. It's one of a whole family of missile artillery which students at Fort Sill learn how to fire. Fort Sill rocket crews hold regular dry run firing exercises on missile ranges in remote parts of the country. and communicate. Here at Fort Sill, U.S. Army field artillerymen learn to do them all, and do them well. And this, gentlemen, is a sight that ought to make you feel at home. Horses played an important role at Fort Sill. As an old cavalry post, the tradition of the man on horseback is still preserved here. It takes all kinds of activities to support artillery training programs. 
In this department, artists and technicians make the training aids that are used in the different types of instruction. These training aids, many of them working models made in the Fort Sill shops, help the student understand how complicated artillery components actually operate. Also supporting training at the school is the most complete technical library on field artillery and missiles in the world. On these shelves, the student can find out anything about cannon and the art of gunnery from ancient days up to the present. That includes many volumes on the guns of your period. Afternoon, gentlemen. You are forward observers with Bravo Battery, 3rd Battalion, 42nd Artillery. Throughout the history of gunnery, Field artillery men have always searched for ways to hit their targets with greater accuracy. These students from Fort Sills Artillery Officer Candidate School are learning how to call for accurate fire by attending a course in observed fire procedures. Again, we will use the right edge of reference point bunker. Is there anyone who does not identify reference point bunker? The direction to reference point bunker is a direction of 5962. To identify an infantry platoon in trenches. From Fall Ridge Central, go left, one mil, and down from the skyline, one, two mil. This will place you on a piece of white junk, the forward slope of a mound. Target intelligence is quickly passed along by the student observer to the fire direction center, where it is converted into firing data and sent to the gun batteries some distance away. Add 5-0. Squad of infantry in trenches. VT in effect. Just fire. And the mission. Mission of neutralization of an infantry platoon in trenches was accomplished in a satisfactory manner. I have the following comment. Gentlemen, be very aware of the terrain in front of you. What Each you officer candidate at Fort Sill must be familiar with basic field artillery procedures so he can command with assurance in a military art that requires a high degree of skill, intelligence, and discipline. Since its organization in 1941, Fort Sill Artillery Officer Candidate School has provided more than 45,000 junior officers for leadership in firepower in World War II, Korea, and Vietnam. Good afternoon, gentlemen. Welcome to T-3849, artillery in support of the mobile defense. Today's class will begin with a film... For field artillery officers who have already held command assignments, the Field Artillery Officers Advanced Course at Fort Sill trains them in operations under all conditions and equips them for higher artillery and other Army assignments. Fort Sill has become the Field Artillery Center not only for the United States Army, but for Allied armies all over the world. Officers from many nations study field artillery techniques which have proved effective in past combat. Lessons learned here by foreign officers help improve the firepower of their own armies. At Fort Sill, military planners consider not only the needs of today's field artillery men, but the requirements for combat of tomorrow. The Combat Developments Command Field Artillery Agency at Fort Sill is responsible for planning future concepts for the use of firepower in battle. Artists' conceptions of the shape of future weapons point the way toward lighter and more mobile firepower. Under supervision of the U.S. Army Materiel Command's Field Artillery Board, test models of proposed weapons are given full field evaluation 
to determine their efficiency. In tribute to the military skills and the courage that have defended our nation in its critical periods, Americans gather each year on Armed Forces Day at various military installations. This Armed Forces Day celebration at Fort Sill is a salute to one of the nation's most distinguished outposts. A cavalcade of American history has moved beneath the stars and stripes that have floated over this encampment. Along these paths came the homesteaders, settlers, cattlemen, prospectors, generations that have left an imperishable mark upon our heritage. Today, modern artillery and missiles tested at Fort Sill help ensure the preservation of that heritage against any aggressor. That's a heap of shooting power, is that? All of this is possible today because men like you stayed with the job of building a nation. You kept your rounds handy and your powder dry, and you laid down fire where it had to go. That's a good enough example for any field artilleryman. And now I'd like you to meet Honest John, an Army missile for tactical combat use. I see. Yep. I see it, but I don't believe it. I don't blame you, Zack. It's quite a history. Fort Sill through the years. From the horse-drawn field piece to the most powerful sub and missiles. The Fort Sill story is one of dedicated service in defense of our nation. <laughs> 